After my family asked me if I ate dogs, if the Chinese discriminated against me, are Chinese really like this, did they really do that? I realized how many misconceptions does the world outside of China have? So I'm not gonna lie, I don't follow politics every day, probably like most of you do, but I do feel like it's important to know at least what's going on. So I thought it's gonna be kind of boring to just read about it. So I thought, let me make it fun, do some research. And after a lot of research, I finally started making this video. And for those who aren't as into politics as I am, I did make this as easy as possible to understand not just for you, but also for myself. So why do leaders and people in the West persist so much to telling how bad and how wrong China is? Did you know 67% of Americans have cold feelings towards China? On a scale of zero to 100, the West rated the country less than a 50. So really, be honest, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about the country, China? I mean, when talking about people, it's really brought up about the Chinese people, the history and the culture. Instead, they focus primarily on the Chinese government. Let me just put on my sunglasses. Definitely the coolest foreigner in China. Let's get going on the myths. So, myth one. The authoritarian political systems can't be legitimate. Wow, those are some big words. Good job, Lizzie. <laughs> Many Chinese people don't believe that democracy is necessary for the economic success. They do, however, believe that their form of government is legitimate and effective. Do you know why they believe so much that their systems are more legitimate than the West? China had to fight alone against Japan when the US entered the World War II and this resulting in victory so it really goes way back for people that they really do believe that the decisions their government make is the best for the whole country. The Chinese believe in a system called the Marxist-Leninist. Another big word I know, just stick with me here. The first word, Marxist, is concerned primarily with economic outcomes where Leninism is essentially a political doctrine. So they're primarily concerned about control. So put these two words together, this Marxist-Leninist system is concerned not only with the economic outcomes, but also with gaining and maintaining control over the system. If China was only concerned with the economic outcomes, I think it would welcome all foreign businesses and treat them as equal partners. But because China is also Leninist, the issues that are important to Chinese leaders to kind of keep that control, I don't think they are really open to change their minds about what they believe is good for the Chinese economy and for the Chinese people. They want to keep that control. If you're new to the channel, Ni Hao, I'm Lizzie. And today I'm going to share with you the lies and uh, the negative things that I've read about China in the media, that is not true. I'm not gonna lie, I had a lot of fun doing research for this video. And I definitely learned a lot, so I hope you will too. So now I want to talk about some overall bad things that I read while I did my research. Which, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty shocked about. Like, some of these things are ridiculous. Can we just start with Trump, please? So quite a while back, Trump thought it is a good idea to put sanctions on the shipping of Chinese goods and also on, you know, the phone company Huawei. The reason he did this was he thought, yes, Trump thought at the time that it's a great way to bargain for further trade negotiations. But these trade disputes did, however, not get handled. So you can just imagine from a Western perspective, how this exploded all the negative comments about China. And then I don't know if you've ever heard about the genocide in Xinjiang. That is quite a sensitive topic. But anyway, when these rumors came out, it gave the US even more power in a way to kind of justify themselves to then sanction even more Chinese companies 
but they never even had hard evidence. Total lie, by the way, right? Like just so many positive things are being turned into negatives. Like during this whole COVID situation, the Western media said how bad China is for keeping the Chinese people in their country. And then when they finally opened up, guess what? China was good. No, China was even worse because how is it possible that they can open the borders and let people fly out when COVID is still here? <sighs> Shame, China. China can just never win, right? Everything has just to do to stop the rise of China. Like my mom always said this thing of the highest trees catch the most wind. And it's true because China is rising so much, everyone in the West is doing as much as possible to kind of bring them down because nope, no one can be better than me. I'm the best and I will prove it by telling other countries how bad they are. Yeah, because that says a lot about you, right? Like, do you guys remember that time when COVID just started? This Westerner published an article that as soon as COVID broke out in Wuhan, they sent out 33 flights out of Wuhan to all over Europe, the US, wherever, all over the world. And this then obviously spread the virus to the whole world. So then they found out that all these flights were canceled. <sighs> Do you think that Westerner ever published an apology? Oh, in your wildest dreams, that would happen. But the thing is, the lie has already spread. It's already gotten into people's minds and, you know, it's just easier for them to believe that this unknown big virus, oh, it comes from China and it's China. <sighs> Another lie is that the whole of China is under forced labor. Because somewhere, someone saw a picture of a person lying in a park sleeping, relaxing, but it's because they are forced to work and they're just gonna die because they work so hard. It's kind of dramatic if you think about it. <gasps> Look at this Meituan driver. He is supposed to deliver food, but he is sitting and waiting. <gasps> oh, horrible life they have. Now, if you've been to China, you will know that the Chinese can sleep literally it's normal for construction workers to sleep on the ground during lunchtime or even teachers at their desks during lunchtime and what just because westerners don't do that is somehow wrong that the Chinese can do that? Have you ever thought that maybe it's a better thing that the Chinese feel so safe to sleep on the ground with their personal belongings around them and that no one will steal them? And here you are in a country, you can't even walk anywhere, but you judge or put some negative things about people having a good life? Come on. Another lie. Here comes another lie. China tracks everyone. You see all these cars? Yep, in one of these cars, the police have been alarmed that a foreigner is walking here. So there's probably someone sitting in these cars watching me. <laughs> oh, come on, don't tell me you're not laughing. So when the Chinese have been alarmed about you, whether you are foreign or Chinese, and that you are busy with criminal activity, so there is suspicion around your name, they can track you, yes. But if not, you are just living your life, I promise you, you will be fine. I and everyone else who's been living here for a thousand years, there has never been a case of the police just tracking someone randomly because they're living life. No. Like if you do come to China as a foreigner, you will need a VPN as Google, you know, any types of social media is illegal here. So what we do is when we do text each other about VPNs, you don't text VPN because, you know, that might alarm some people to then watch you a little bit closer. But that is about it. But you think if people are busy with 
criminal activities, that it's too much control from the authorities or from the police to then track you? Mm, nope. I think maybe more countries should implement this and there will be less problems. But hey, that's just my opinion. Ding, ding, ding. Here we go, another one. There is a food shortage in China. These are the only food stands in China. What are we gonna do? Definitely a shortage. People come to Kunming, the food is here. And don't you dare, because you watched my previous video and saw that I lost 21 kgs, that it's because there's a food shortage in China. Come on. It literally happened many, many years ago that yes, China does struggle with food, but they have worked their butts off to get where they are today. I know I'm not even going into this. There is no food shortage in China. Talking about the food, the Chinese restaurants in your country are foods that is not really famous in China, like sweet and sour chicken, really fried foods, that is not really famous in China. So if you want Chinese foods, just come to China and eat it here. Ah, let me end on my personal favorite, the Made in China sticker. I actually always laughed when I saw the Made in China sticker at the back as I thought it was really bad quality. But now I'm just laughing at myself and my stupidity because I had no reason to believe that it's true. It's just a thing I thought to be true because that's what everyone was saying. Since I've been here, most of the things I own, furniture, my TV, microwave, air fryer, my clothes, my shoes, the cheaper, the better. And no, China, see, this is a positive thing. So yes, I am very lucky that everything is cheap here and the quality is amazing. So I'm not gonna lie, it was really actually fun to do all this research for this video. I really learned a lot and my brain has since gotten much smarter. <laughs> I hope you understand more about China, the Western media and about what actually goes on here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video!